Okay, so Insta360 have just released their latest app and firmware updates, which includes really cool AI effects that you can now generate through their app. You saw some shots at the start of this video. I've generated all of those using this new AI update. Now you can go from a very lengthy, time-consuming manual process to get movement shots like that, to now a very fast, easy, automated way to generate your AI footage in just a few clicks. So let's go ahead and showcase what those few updates are. And this is going to be a very useful video for the people that do have the X4 and are really looking to create all of their content, create some cinematic shots very quickly and easily without wasting any time. But if you are new to the X4 or any of the Insta360 products, I'm just gonna bring up a screenshot here, which highlights all of the key features of the X4, because in my opinion, this is one of the best action cameras on the market. It gives you 8K footage. It's the most clearest in all conditions and it's super smooth. Like I've never seen a camera that's as stable as this when you are creating all of your cinematic footage. Now, having said that, you can go ahead and make sure you check the link in the description to find out more information and all of the key specs of the X4, which I'm not going to cover in this video because there's already like hundreds and maybe thousands of reviews already on this, but I'm gonna focus purely on the new AI updates on this that are gonna give you some really cool shots when you do use this for your filming. So let's get into it. Okay, so with better scene recognition, the AI on the new app update can now easily recognize the theme of where you are doing your filming and give you the right interactions and categorize them in separate clips to make sure you get the best movements, the camera angles from your 360 videos, and to just generate them and compile them into a very nice cinematic shot. So whether you're going maybe skiing and you take some really cool skiing shots with that, it will detect that. If you're riding a motorbike down the road, for example, it will detect you're having some fast movements on a motorbike. Or even if you're just playing with your pet in a the park, then it's really cool to just check to see what you are actually doing in those videos and to help you recognize the scenes to make sure it matches the AI analysis when it puts those clips and categories together. Now, I don't have specifically clips that I've taken using those types of scenarios, but I'm just gonna showcase what that may look like. So if you go into one of your 360 clips, for example, now I'm just gonna pause it. If you go onto the AI tab, which is just there on the top left, so you have the three tabs, you have AI, Quick, and Pro. That's more for beginners, intermediate, and advanced users. If I go into AI, you'll see this button along the bottom called AI Analysis Auto Frame. If you select this, this will recognize the theme and all of the scenes in there and try to generate them into categories, but also it can detect and recognize all the highlights and the best parts of the clip to generate them as well. So it's gonna go ahead and do the analysis now. And because this is a short 25 second clip, it's generated what it thinks is probably the best shots because it detects me riding on a scooter through a very nice area in a local business park. So what you can see down here on the bottom left is a folder called clips. It's generated generally two clips. If I hit on that, you can see on the top there's categories. There's a selfie view and a forward view and then one that just shows the scenery. And you can cycle through these. You can export any of these individually if you like, or you can go in and edit specifically each scene. Now on the bottom left, you see that little thumbnail. If you select those two clips, you have the option to actually remove either of them. So if you have a video that generated maybe 10 clips, you can go and remove whichever ones you want. And that's also a very useful feature. Now with this AI analysis and auto framing, this also does better highlight recognition. So here's just another example. This has generated three clips. I've got the selfie stick on my shoulder just behind me as I'm riding the scooter. And you can see it's done these movements, it's picked out the best clips, it's sped up some of the areas of the video as well. If you go and hit the clips button just down there, you'll see the three different clips that it thinks is the best for the scenario that is picked up from its AI analysis. Next, we're gonna talk about the template and movement features, which is probably the best new addition for me personally. Now let's go ahead and dive into one of these videos. So what you need to do to get a lot of preset templates is if you go ahead after doing the AI analysis, on the bottom right, if you hit that edit button, this will take you into the template library. There's a whole bunch of new templates here, as you can see. And when you select some of these, it will just create those nice stories that you can share to your social channels. And if you go ahead and just press one of them, it's very quick and easy. It doesn't take long to just generate the entire video for you. And what that does, it takes some of the best scenes and highlights from the actual video that you've taken. And you can take it from multiple videos and it will stitch the best from all of the videos you've selected and create this nice little cinematic shot. 
and all these different movements and camera angles from your 360 video, which just eliminates all of the need for you to do any manual time consuming process to get some really cool shots and effects like this. So I'm very happy with the way these templates work. But one thing is the fact that you can customize these yourself a little bit more because there might be some areas of the video that you're just quite not happy with, then you can actually manually select the movements of the camera angles with the new movement feature. It's kind of like transitions when you have maybe Final Cut Pro when you're doing your editing. So to do that, if you go ahead and hit the edit button just here, you can see it's generated all of those different little scenes within that clip and highlight reel. You can go ahead and select on any of these ones and then you have the option there called movement just underneath it. This is new, so if you select movement, there's a whole bunch of these movements and transitions that you can go from scene to scene. And all you need to do is just manually select it, it will give you that preview. And you don't need to do any of these by using keyframing in the Pro tab. This eliminates all of that manual process and especially if you are a beginner to this, having these types of options to do movements it's just going to be a game changer and you can see how quick and easy that was. I don't need to do anything else. And there's so many options that you'll always find something that suits everyone. And one of my favorite ones is the tiny planet ones. If you go ahead and look at this, it just looks really cool. It's fun and the effect on it is just really, you know, engaging when you share it to social media. So let's go ahead and just add that movement there. I'll select this. And then if we go ahead and see how that looks. Of course, when you export this, it will be much better quality. Now you can see it's coming up to that movement I've selected with a tiny planet. There we go. I've added that in manually. And then it goes over to the next scene. And if you feel like the next scene wasn't a great transition, what you can do is just select that particular scene and hit delete. And that will remove it from the list. And if I go ahead and delete this one for example and maybe I will change the movement on the next one here to maybe in and out and then let's see how that looks now so you can see how you're starting to play around and customize with all of these edits and there you go that was a very nice example of how you can play around with movements and you don't necessarily need to go all the way up to this stage to just add movements. If, for example, you go all the way back to your gallery and you find a clip that you like, then you can just go onto the Pro tab rather than the AI tab. And if you just hit the Add Keyframe button, it comes up with the movement option there. So you can just add a movement from one keyframe to another keyframe if you are wanting to do a lot of the manual pro edits. So I think the templates and the movements is going to change the way you generate your clips and how fast you generate them going forward. Okay, and the final thing that I really wanna showcase with all of these updates is the much better Deep Track 3.0 when it does recognize not just people, but also you can now recognize and track just objects. But the way it does it is now so much faster and easier. Let me show you an example. Now on this clip, you can see it's going to detect people in my environment. And what that does now, it creates those little green dots above the person. So rather than you having to manually select an area around a person to track them, you can literally tap one of these dots and it will create that little area for you because it does detect a human. But if you wanted to manually create an area around an object, it can also keep that center frame as well. If you zoom in, it will do a great job trying to detect something that it can easily track. Here you can see it's got a green dot over the bicycle as well, which I think is actually great. Now, in fact, what I might do is select the bicycle there. You can see it's got the handle, it's doing the tracking. Now, as I'm moving, it's tracked that very well. So I'm going to stop the tracking. I'm just gonna tap and delete that track and show you what it's like to detect a person. So I'm going to select this person. And as I'm going down the hill, you will see that it's going to keep that person center focus and it's actually doing a very good job. So even if there's some obstructions, it will continue tracking that person. If they end up being too far away, the tracking will stop, but I think that's far enough. So I can just do stop tracking there and then I can go ahead and start tracking a different person, maybe here. And it will just follow that person walking up the hill. So you can just switch between all of the different people it's tracking very easily by just tapping the green dots that it automatically detects. So DeepTrack 
has been a very great way to just follow and keep people or objects in focus. If, for example, I want to keep this thing in focus here, I can just start tracking that. And you can see how it recognizes and just keeps that in focus. And it doesn't allow me to move the camera anywhere off of that object. So as well as it works with humans, it also works great with objects like this. So that's it guys, all of the new AI updates on the latest firmware, the latest app. Make sure to download it, make sure to check the link in the description to find out more information about the X4 and its capabilities. And in fact, anyone who goes ahead and purchases the X4 using my affiliate link in the description will also receive this invisible selfie stick absolutely free. So make sure you don't miss that offer. And if you have any questions about any of those new features, make sure to drop them down below. Make sure to like this video, make sure to subscribe. I'm going to be playing around with a lot of these AI features and I'm going to be bringing you some tutorials of how to generate some really cool shots, including bullet time in an upcoming videos. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of those ones and I will catch you all at the next one. Take care.